Complex elements are single elements that were originally drawn as complex elements, i.e. a smart line with lines and arcs, or made into complex elements at a later time. And they come in two basic types. First is a complex chain, which is an open element. And as I just mentioned, it may have been drawn originally as a series of different but connected element types, such as lines, line strings, arcs, curves, etc., that were edited to form a single complex chain. It may also have been originally drawn with smart line as a complex chain in the first place. And the second is a complex shape, which is essentially entirely similar to a complex chain, except that it's a closed shape. Now you might be asking why would you want to create complex chains and shapes? And there are three main reasons. The first is that the complex chain or shape is a single element even though it was created from several individual elements. The multiple elements now can be edited or manipulated as one element. The second reason is patterning, which is microstation speak for hatching, where you'll find that many patterning operations require closed shapes as boundaries for the patterning process. And the third reason is derived shapes, where some of microstation tools allow you to create new shapes from the boundaries of existing shapes. And these are called Boolean operations. And we'll discuss these in a later video. Now the tools are found on the groups toolbox. And this makes sense since you're essentially grouping multiple elements into single complex elements. And that's the toolbox here. And I'm going to open this as a standalone toolbox, which will make things a little easier to see. Now one thing to keep in mind as we go through the exercises is that the completed complex chain or complex element will assume the active element attributes regardless of the attributes of the original elements. This means that you should set the desired active element attributes before starting the complex element creation process. You can of course change the active element of the completed chain or shape at any time. Let's get started using SmartLine, which as you probably know can create complex chains and complex shapes. So SmartLine first. Make sure that Join Elements is on. And let's draw something. I'm going to change my color back to white. And we'll draw a line. Hit the tilde key. Change to arcs. Let's draw an arc. Tilde key. Switch back to lines and right click to stop. Now it would be helpful to check to see if this is a complex chain. I'm going to open the element information tool and just leave that on the screen there. Then we can use the element selection tool, select, and we can see that it's a complex chain. So far, so good. Let me delete that. Let's try a complex shape now back to smart line. Let's repeat this process. This time though, I'm just going to draw lines, but I'm going to close the shape. And of course the tool settings window immediately pops open and asks me if I want to close the element. I do, I just data point. Let's see what this is. It's a shape. It's not a complex shape, it's just a shape. And the reason for that is that my original elements were all lines. It won't be a complex shape because I didn't create it from two or more different element types. I only had lines. So let's reverse this process. I'll undo that. Let's use smart line again. Another line. Now let's add an arc, which will make it into a complex shape and line. And let's join my shape. Let's check it. And it's now a complex shape. And the complexity comes from the arcs and the lines together. So far, so good. Let me undo that. And let's progress. Now we'll start using the complex chain creation tools. Smart line again. This time I want join elements off because I want to place single elements here. And because it's complex and I'm using smart line, not the basic line tool, because I need different element types, not just lines. So line first, 
tilde key. Let's draw an arc. Change back to lines, tilde key. I like to draw horizontal here, so I use T at the keyboard to rotate the compass. Line. I'm drawing a line up here and stopping. Right click. Now I'm going to add some more lines, just single lines, all connected to that endpoint. Now let's create a complex chain. Off to the complex chain tool, create complex chain. Look at the tool settings window. I have two methods available, manual and automatic. Let's start with manual. The simplified geometry option only applies to line elements. I cannot use this with a complex element where I have mixed element types. So we'll ignore that for the moment. With the manual option, I will select each element first to create the chain. So select the first one, select the arc, select the line, select that line, that's the path I want to take. Accept that, left click, right click to stop the tool. Let's find out what it is. There it is. It is a complex chain, as it should be, lines and arcs. Let's undo that. And I'm going to undo it back to the original lines and arcs. And now we're back to individual lines and arcs. Now let's try the same tool, but let's try the automatic method instead. Notice now that the max gap option is available to us. It was grayed out using the manual method. And this means that a value here will allow MicroStation to bridge a gap up to the value of that maximum gap, but not beyond. This is very useful if you have faulty geometry or there is a specific gap, which was a result of the original geometry. Let's try this now. I need to identify the first element, but after that, MicroStation will choose a path for me and I can control where the path goes. So I simply data point in the view. Data point. MicroStation has automatically chosen this path, including this line. Well, I don't want that line. I want this line. So to force MicroStation to go to there, I need to hit the reset button. So right button. There's a second choice for MicroStation. Not good enough. Reset. Still not good enough. Reset again. That's the line I want. Left click to accept. Let's see what we have. And we have our chain back again. And it's a complex chain again. So the automatic method is obviously a little quicker, provided that MicroStation is not forced to choose between elements on a very complex path, in which case it might be quicker to use the manual method. So please practice both those methods on this or a similar set of individual elements. It's a quite straightforward process and not difficult to do.